Hey, I'm Graham with Hubble, and today we're going to take a look at something that we're all intimately familiar with. The backbone of the five-day work week and every shift imaginable. Caffeine. Now, would you believe me if I told you that there was a wrong way to drink your coffee? I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. Okay, I get it, everyone has an opinion, but you know, seeing that I'm on YouTube, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw my hat in the ring too. I mean, some people say it stunts your growth as a child. Get in line, man. Or that it will ruin your sleep. But others, including us here at Hubble, swear by our dose of caffeine to get the day started, to be more alert and to focus. What the f have you been doing? Damn it, and then there's no f coffee. We all need that jolt in the morning. I mean, no one is really a morning person, right? We gotta get that stimulation, that will to live. I mean, when? So let's talk a bit about caffeine and see just how we can make the most out of our morning brew or Joe or whatever weird name you wanna call it. Coffee has a very rich and bold history. It's pretty revolutionary, in fact. So let's take a look at just three different points in coffee's rich history, and after that, we'll find the perfect way to drink your coffee. So the oldest legend starts in Ethiopia, where a goat farmer, whilst herding his goats, noticed that when they ate berries from a certain tree, they became noticeably more energetic. And then this genius, this absolute legend, roasted the seeds and brewed them as though he already knew how to do it. But that, of course, is just a legend. The first known brewing of coffee was found in Yemen in the 15th century, before it spread across the Middle East. In the 1600s, coffee houses became so prevalent in England that women petitioned to ban coffee to stop their husbands from, quote, deposing princes, settling the bounds of kingdoms, and balancing the power of Europe with justice and impartiality, end quote. They even went so far as to call it a, quote, newfangled, abominable, and heathenish liquor that turned men into French layabouts, end quote. Sounds almost like prohibition. Later, around 1720, the mayor of Amsterdam, the Dutch being the first to cultivate coffee outside of the Middle East, by dubious means, of course, gifted a coffee tree to Louis XIV, who was very precious about it. Then a French naval officer stole a shoot from that coffee tree and whisked it away to the New World. And by most accounts of genetic testing, much of the coffee grown in Central and South America is related to that one coffee plant. Even later than that, when it came to the United States, it served as a nice way to circumvent the English king's tea tax. So coffee is inherently a revolutionary drink that has since been diluted so that we can trudge through our 40-hour work week. We Westerners took it away to expedite our own revolutionary ideals. In some ways, coffee was the oil before oil. All right, let's get one thing straight. Caffeine is an ene. You know what I mean? Now, I may not be a scientist, but I am a young man, and I have noticed that there are quite a number of drugs that end in ene. So consider this my pseudoscienceological way of saying that caffeine is a drug. But you knew that already. It is a central nervous system stimulant that takes about an hour to take effect, and it will act in my brain by attaching to my adenosine receptors, adenosine being a nucleoside that tells my body that I'm tired, and thus blocking adenosine, making me feel more awake. But the downside being that once the caffeine is out of my system, there has been a buildup of adenosine, which will then hit me with the good old fashioned caffeine crash. There's another catch as well. Caffeine has a half-life of about four to six hours. So say you ingest about 200 milligrams of caffeine at noon, about the average dose of a cup of coffee. By about 6 p.m., you will still have roughly 100 milligrams of caffeine left in you. 
And here's where coffee gets a little bad. It can inhibit your body from getting all the rest it needs during the third stage of sleep just before you hit REM and start dreaming. This is generally understood as the part of the sleep cycle where the body repairs itself, where the brain can restore itself, and when the immune system is strengthened. Caffeine interrupts this part of the sleep cycle and can lead to more awakenings in the night. <gasps> I've had an awakening, both spiritual and sexual. Maybe it's the coffee. <laughs> so maybe your coffee is doing its job a little too well. You get one in the morning to get rid of that groggy feeling, then another when you start to crash off the first one, and just keep that chain rolling until it's time to go home so you can get some caffeinated sleep. It's like the Jizza says in Coffee and Cigarettes. I used to drink it every night, every single night, up until it was time to go to sleep, just to make me dream faster. You know, like when they flash those cameras on those ND500 cars, and they just That's how my dreams were. Now, I don't know about you, but if my dreams go by that fast, then I'm not getting to enjoy my sleep. But Mr. Graham, Mr. Arbiter of Information on YouTube, how do I bypass these side effects and get only the good stuff from my caffeine addiction? Well, I'll tell you. So what do we do? How do we stop it from ruining our sleep or giving us anxiety? Well, we have three main things to take into consideration when managing our caffeine intake. We have the half-life, or how long it takes for the caffeine to move through our system, which should affect when we take it, the dosage, and then a sneaky little hack. Uh, no thanks, I think I've, <laughs> I think I've had enough. It's moderation, of course it is. I mean, that's usually the case, isn't it? Everything in moderation, as they say. But how do we manage it and make the most out of our morning coffee rush? Well, as we said before, the average eight ounce coffee contains about 200 milligrams of caffeine, and doctors recommend not having more than 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. So that's pretty easy. Just try to keep it to two cups of coffee or tea a day. And if you're unsure of how much caffeine is in your beverage of choice, you can just look it up online or on the nutrition facts and work out your daily intake that way. And you should generally try to keep it in the morning, if you're a morning person, so that it won't affect your sleep. So make sure to get your caffeine fill around eight hours before you go to sleep, or like 2 p.m. if you go to bed at 10, to ensure that you will get your full night's rest and not wake up with a caffeine hangover that only caffeine can cure. And what of the revolutionary concept of the caffeine nap? This is when you drink a cup of coffee right before taking a nap. It seems counterintuitive, but you sleep for the amount of time it takes for the caffeine to take effect. So you wake up from a nice quick rest, already getting invigorated by the caffeine. I feel invigorated. Now, a few years ago, Vox did a cool video about it, so the link is in the top right corner. It's quite simple, really. Just be more aware of how much caffeine you take in each day. Try to keep it in the morning, and if you want no more, then wean yourself off slowly to avoid withdrawal. I'm sorry, man. It's just been a tough morning. Now, sleep is the real superpower here, and your body will thank you for getting a full night's rest by making you stronger and more resistant to diseases like the, uh, like the, that, like that one. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you not to have your Joe, dirt, mud, brew, high octane, cup lightning, brain juice, java, or worm dirt. We don't judge. Just don't go all out. Remember, moderation, timing, and dosage. Your body will thank you. Thanks for watching. Give the video a like if you found it informative, or I guess give it a dislike if you hate me for trash talking your drug of choice. If you like this and want to see more, then check out our channel. And if you like it, then hit that big old button. And we'll see you next week. Are we ready? Roll camera. Action. Hey, I'm Graham with Hubble.